get started. So um, for the rest of the course, uh, we will see a big thread of Western art history. So this is the first chapter we are going to see, uh, the prehistoric and ancient Mediterranean world. So let's see the beginning of the art history. So Mediterranean Sea, uh, where the story of Western art begins. So um, it is surrounding uh, here, uh, Africa and Near East and Europe. And here is the Mediterranean Sea. So beginning around 3000 BCE, numerous ancient civilizations arose, overlapped and interacted. So they learned from one another and conquered each other and they transformed uh, into the world. So let's just briefly see uh, before the, um, the Mediterranean civilizations. So this is a um, female figure sculpture. Uh, 25,000 years ago. And it was found near Willendorf, a town in uh, present day Austria. And it is small enough to fit comfortably uh, in the palm of hand. Uh, it has um, detailed hairstyle that covers the entire head like this. All right, it's okay, Danielle. All right, so um, how does it look like everyone? How does you know, this scripture look like? Uh, it's a woman. Mm -hmm. It's a woman but it's not a normal, you know, the woman's shapes, right? Yeah. Yeah. So the body's proportions um, are exaggerated and the head is so big and the body is small, but um, it, you know, has the, you know, the, you know, fat bodies. Um, so the scholars uh, long assumed that uh, uh, they were uh, fertility figures used in some symbolic way to encourage pregnancy and childbirth. So um, this is a daily life of the uh, Neolithic period in the rock paintings of the uh, Tassili Nature region of um, Algeria in Northern Africa. So can you tell me what you can see in this painting? Figures, women, mm -hmm. that's, a, that's a cow? Yeah, it seems like, you know, yeah, cow, a big, you know, mammals, yes. Hunters. Uh-huh, hunters, yes, very good. So, uh, today, uh, Tassili Nature is uh, uh, part of the Sahara, the world's largest desert. So we can assume at that time, the desert had not yet emerged. So the, the reason as a vast grassland, you know, because there, there are, you know, the big uh, beasts here and um, home to animals or plants and the people we see depicted here. So the figure depicts the um, essence of human uh, and the animals, animal bodies uh, in actively posed uh, stylized silhouettes. Um, so the Willendorf's female figure sculpture 
and the uh, Tessili Nature's rock painting were uh, before the civilization. So now let's see the Mediterranean world. The Western civilization was originated in here, uh, the region surrounding uh, Mediterranean Sea. So today we are going to see two big threat, um, two big uh, art thread of Mediterranean world. First one is Mesopotamia and the next one is Egypt. So let me uh, show you the um, ancient Mediterranean world uh, timeline. So the female figure uh, sculpture we just saw is about uh, 23,000 BCE. So BCE means before the common era, before the century. And uh, the rock uh, painting in Northern, Northern Africa is about uh, 5,000 BCE. So these, uh, uh, these were found also in Mediterranean. And now um, the civilization begins by uh, building empires. Uh, the Mesopotamia here arose about uh, 2,000 years uh, before the century. And uh, this area of Mesopotamia was highly desirable. So many empires were built and disappeared. So like Sumer, Akkad, Babylon, and Assyria, and Babylon again. On the other hand, the Egypt, Egypt was continued as one empire for 1700 years, and it was a parallel with the Mesopotamia's time period. So let's see Mesopotamia first. Uh, the reason Mesopotamia is here, the reason known to the uh, ancient world as Mesopotamia occupied a large area, roughly um, equivalent to the present day nation of Iraq. So fertile soil watered by the you know, Tigrid River, this is the Tigrid River and the Euphrates River uh, made uh, Mesopotamia highly desirable but a lack of natural boundaries made it easy to invade and difficult to defend. So uh, Sumerian, uh, Sumerian uh, built a city-state in uh, Mesopotamia first. Um, was, and then um, Sumer is here. And the first empire was by Akkadian, it was about here. And uh, the second empire, uh, Babylonian, is here. And the third empire by Assyrian was here. And the last empire of the uh, Mesopotamia was built Babylonian again. So it is called the Neo Babylon. So these are all ancient empires in uh, Mesopotamia area. So um, there are not many legacy left, um, you, know, you know, thanks to the lots of, you know, uh, you know lots of, you know, uh, the, uh, country is built here in this area, but uh, let's see one by one. So the first uh, cities of Mesopotamia arose in the southern area, a region called Sumer by Sumerian. 
So the Sumerians were uh, the first people to leave behind them, not just uh, artifacts, but also words. So lacking stone, uh, the Sumerian built their cities of the sun-dried brick using the load-bearing construction technique, like this. Um, and they had um, the refined and luxurious aspects of art. So can you guess what is this? Can you guess what it is? It looks it look like a um, Huh? A heart? Yes. It looks like you know ancient harp. Yes, it's a musical instrument. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And by uh, 2000, uh, 2300 BCE, uh, the Sumerian city-states had been conquered by Akkadian, the neighbor, uh, the neighbors uh, to the north, Akkadian. So under um, Ruler Sargar I, the Akkadians established the region's first empire. And uh, Sargar I's grandson, Naram Sin, uh, commemorated his victory. This is the Naram Sin. So, over the Lulubi people of eastern Mesopotamia with uh, monumental still of King Naram Sin. So, this is the, uh, the monumental. Uh, limestone. So it pictures the Akkadian king dressed uh, in a gold-like uh, regalia and uh, striding confident, um, confidently over the defeated soldiers. And let's see the second empire, Babylon. So um, Amodites uh, who um, consolidated their role over the risen and established a capital at Babylon. The most important legacy of the Babylonian Empire is not artistic, but legal. A set of addicts and laws complied under the ruler Hammurabi, so known as Hammurabi Code, um, it is the only complete legal code to survive from the ancient world. And uh, it has provided historians with valuable insights into the structure and concerns of Mesopotamian society. And it is third in, uh, ancient empire in Mesopotamia, Assyria. So Assyrians uh, had been gathering power and territory since before uh, 1100 BCE, and their military strength increased significantly under Ashinasarpal II. So it was the largest empire the Risen um, had seen by the time. Ashinasarpal's uh, palace had uh, gates fronted by monumental stone slabs curved into enormous um, human-headed um, winged beast, a bull and a lion. And after Assyria, uh, Babylonian, Babylonians again came to the power in Mesopotamia in the late seventh century. Uh, I'm sorry, in the late 7th century BCE. So they formed a, a kingdom now called the Neo uh, Babylonian. And these new Babylonians surely must be ranked among the great architects of the ancient world. So look at this um, gate architecture. Isn't it so beautiful and sophisticated? You know, it is built in you know, the late seventh century BCE. So um, they developed the true arch here before the ancient Romans did and were mastered the decorative design for architecture. 
So now uh, let's see Egypt. So Egypt arose in the similar time period of Mesopotamia, but the difference is the um, there are five, you know, city states and empires built and disappeared in the Mesopotamia, but Egypt could continue uh, one empire for a long time, like 1700 years. So uh, because it has a strong natural boundaries to protect the empire from the enemies. So the kingdom of Egypt was protected by uh, rocky uh, and navigable, uh, you know, uh, the stretches of Nile rivers here. Uh, and the, um, to the east and the, um, west by uh, vast desert. So Egypt during much of its long history was spared the waves of uh, immigration and invasions that continuously transformed Mesopotamia. The Greek philosopher uh, Plato wrote that Egyptian art uh, did not change for 10,000 years uh, uh, thanks to the uh, natural boundaries, um, they could keep one empire, but um, there were um, there was no artistic uh, diversity. So um, the Sphinx. This is the Sphinx. The Sphinx is the symbol of Egyptian art. Uh, it is essence of stability, order, and endurance. It faces the rising sun, uh, seeming to cast its immovable gaze down the centuries for all eternity. The Sphinx has the um, body of a reclining lion and the head of a man, thought to be the uh, pharaoh uh, coffer uh, whose pyramid tomb is in the center. So the Egyptian made Sphinx as a guard to protect their king and queen's tomb pyramid. And this is um, Egyptian's uh, two-dimensional art. And uh, most of Egyptian two-dimensional art repeats all the same pose like this. And it is called Narmar's pose. So Narmar's pose is typical of Egyptian art. Uh, this is Narmar. So when depicting an important personage, the Egyptian artist strove to show each part of the body uh, to best advantage so that it could be read clearly by the viewer. So Narmar's body is seen in profile and his torso uh, full front and his head in profile, but his eye front again. So this same pose recurs throughout most two-dimensional art in Egypt. And Egyptian buries their most lavish art in uh, loyal tombs. The ruler were um, sent into eternity outfitted with everything they would need to continue life in the, in the sumptuous style they had known on earth, such as uh, furniture, jewelry, chariots, clothing, and artifacts of all kinds. So because they think their life was going to be continued after that um, in the tombs. So um, we are going to continue to see the uh, prehistoric and the ancient Mediterranean world in the next class. And we have a sketchbook project uh, related to this chapter.
So um, for this chapter, we are going to do a morphing drawing. So morphing is a special effect in motion pictures and animations that changes or morphs uh, one image or uh, shape into another um, through a seamless transition. So it, it looks like a very um, complementary technique. However, the morphing art had been tried by ancient artists like this uh, Assyrian sculpture. So it has enormous uh, human headed wing, uh, human headed and winged beast, a bull and a lion. And here is another example. So um, they have um, wild beast head and human's body and the bird's feet. See here, so bird's feet and human's body and the beast head. And uh, it looks more aggressive morphing. So the left beast has a bird's wing and feet and feather with the you know, uh, lions or the you know, wild beast body. And this is a Greek, uh, ancient Greek sculpture. So look at the left uh, figure center. Uh, it is a half human and a half horse. So now um, back to the 21st century. So there are, there are lots of fun morphing images. So I will share it. So it's a morphing, the elephant and an octopus and morphing, a frog and the orange, orange texture. And um, it's morphing with um, a human and a bird's wing on a head. And morphing a turtle and island on the top of the turtle. And morphing a figure, a human's body and a seizures. And morphing a beetle and a cello. So, all right, uh, you will need a sketchbook, a pencil, eraser, and any color medium you have for this project. And um, digital drawing is acceptable you know, as well. And there are four categories, uh, figure, animal, object, nature, um, or machine. So please choose uh, at least the two categories and morph them. So- um, Professor, uh -huh. are you gonna have like what it looks like inside the, um, for the week today, like just in case we need a reminder to go off of a picture? Um, so, um, Please, you know, I'll try your best, you know, to show the process. But if you cannot, you can just, you know, post, you know, what you choose for the morph. Now you can, you know, you can just unload the pictures, what you want to morph. So, um, Professor. Yes. Can it be like a brainstorming process? I mean, if this is due, you know, is it due at the same, at the, you know, like the ovens, excluding the photography? So, uh, yeah, so you can just post the process, you know, you, or you can just, you know, post the, you know, what you, what you want to morph, you know. Okay. Uh -huh. And then you're going to okay. finish this project by end of this course for the final submission. Okay. Yeah. So as usual, everyone, please post the process of your morphing drawing work with description by tonight. And um, by tomorrow, please reply. Uh, at least two of your peers. So let me share more examples. So 
it is a morphing, um, an alligator and a high heel. It's very creative, right? Morphing a cat and a snake. Morphing a scullion and a, a part of machine. Oh, and morphing an ant and measuring spoon. Morphing a girl and a wolf. So that's it. So you can do a color or a black and white. So I can't wait to see your creative morphing drawing. So uh, when you're ready to post, I need you to post to your uh, work here, uh, sketchbook 9.1 by tonight. And by tomorrow, please reply to your peers. So again, you can just, um, you can post the process of your drawing if you, you know, start. And uh, you can just post what you want to morph here with the photos. So that's it.